This video will do an example of perturbation theory in quantum mechanics where we will calculate the first order energy of the particle in a box wave functions using the particle in a slanted box Hamiltonian. So for our particle in a slanted box model system, we have the particle in a box Hamiltonian, which was the kinetic energy operator minus h bar squared over two times mass, second derivative with respect to x. That was our reference Hamiltonian of our reference particle in a box system, so h0, plus our potential energy, which starts at 0 at x equals 0 and goes up to v0 at x equals l, is linear in between. So our potential energy operator is v0 x over l. So this is our perturbation operator v, and we're interested in the ground state here for this particular wave function. So psi zero, the reference wave function for n equals one, is equal to the ground state particle in a box wave function, which is square root of two over L sine n pi x over L, for which for n equals one is pi x over L. <clears throat> we have our Schrodinger equation, our reference Schrodinger equation for our reference wave functions and energies, h naught psi naught of n, equals e naught of n times psi naught of n. And our reference energies, our zeroth order energies of these wave functions is equal to h squared n squared over eight ml squared. L being length of the box, h Planck's constant, m mass of the particle. All right, we calculated, we derived and stated in previous videos that the first order correction to our energy is the expectation value of the perturbation operator acting on our ground state wave function. So that'll be the integral over all space of psi zero star times V acting on psi zero. All right, so let's compute our first order correction to our particle in a box wave functions using the particle in a slanted box uh, Hamiltonian. So this will be an integral from zero to L with respect to X. Psi star is just psi. There's no square root of minus one. There's no I, no imaginary component. So the wave function complex conjugate is just the wave function here. So integral zero to L square root two over L sine n pi X over L perturbation operator V naught X over L times the wave function square root of two over L sine n pi X over L. So square root of two over L squared, we can factor that out, two over L. V naught and L are constants, factor that out, V naught over L. What we get is the integral from zero to L of X sine squared N pi X over L with respect to X. So this integral, which came up in our video on the average position of the particle in a box, ends up being L squared over four so take that, multiply by this, which is 2 V naught over L squared. The L squareds cancel. The 2 cancels the 4, leaving a 2 in the denominator. So our first order correction to the nth particle in a box state in the particle in a slanted box in first order perturbation theory is equal to V naught, the height of our slant over 2. It's equal to the average value of our perturbation over the entire box because it's lower over here, it's higher over there, but on average, the potential energy is V naught over two. So this says that our particle in a box energies at first order perturbation theory is H squared N squared over eight ML squared, the reference energy, plus the first order correction to the energy V naught over two, plus then we would have second order, third order, fourth order corrections beyond that, but that's something that would depend at least on V naught squared. So second order perturbation theory will give us something that depends on V naught squared, third order, V naught cubed, etc. So if V naught is quite small relative to these energy levels, then V naught squared is going to be even smaller, V naught cubed even smaller. So for small perturbations, this first order energy is actually quite good. As the perturbation gets bigger, you'll notice that this expression is slightly different than the one we got from doing this problem in the linear variational example. So the linear variational method will have a slightly better answer at, at bigger perturbations. But for small perturbations, this first order perturbation theory, which gave a very simple result, actually gives a pretty reliable and numerically accurate answer until V naught starts to get large relative to the energies of our functions.